Hi everybody, thank you for stopping by Living To Do's review of Married At First Sight Season 15, Episode 8, called Party Ways. Before I get started with the review, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it, and I thank you in advance. So, um, let's get started with this review. Let's start with um, Ben and Morgan. Uh, they have a party, and, um, actually before they had a party, they talked to their friends, and it looks like, um, Morgan is telling the friends that, um, her friend that her honeymoon wasn't great. She believes that Ben is not seeing her for what or who she is. Uh, she seemed to... I don't know if it was the way it was edited, but she seemed to skate around the actual issue. And she believes that Ben sees her maybe as a liar still and not who she really is. And she's really affected by that. Um, her friend Carl told her um, to let her walls down. And cause she, she explains that her walls are up because she felt let down because he... Uh, told some private business and he told her to let her walls down that she needs to grow and growth is painful so she needs to talk to him um, and put her walls down and I think basically just be an adult about it I thought he gave her great advice uh, they were having a party all the couples are going to have a party and Ben and Morgan's party theme is tacos and tequila um, when the party goers were all around and they were talking about the problem that they're having in the marriage, I don't think Ben looks scared. He actually looked like the cat got his tongue. And I believe he was afraid to open his mouth based on the past experience they had of him opening his mouth. And she was like saying, okay, you can tell him, you go ahead. And he just looked scared like a deer in headlights. I believe he just didn't know what was appropriate in Morgan's mind for him to say. That's what I think. And so um, Morgan opened up and told him about the honeymoon fight. Uh, they talked to each other's friends. And Morgan uh, Ben told Morgan's friend that, you know, she he has apologized. In fact, he's apologized to everybody and their baby mama. And... Her friend advised her too much apologizing loses its, its meaning, and that's true. I just think poor Ben, he he just doesn't know where to turn with this girl. He doesn't know what move to make. And then Morgan was complaining to his friends that she's never worked out a deep hurt with somebody. So it was new to her. She doesn't know what to do. Um, perhaps they just need some assistance and getting over this hump and maybe then so they can get back to square one and that was basically it for those two I really feel for Ben to be to be uh, honest let's talk about Kristen and Mitch uh, they seem happy I think um, actually Mitch seems and looks happier in the relationship than Kristen does um, Kristen talked to her friend Joanna and she told her all about Mitch's place and he's and she said she nearly had a heart attack when she saw his stove that dirty filthy stove <laughs> of course she did poor girl um they had a party their party theme was retro futurism and Mitch was a captain um, like from a spaceship and um, sh they had to shop for that um, Kristen and when she was talking to her friend she asked her f her friend asked her if she told Mitch her big secret and she hadn't yet so we we're waiting to hear it Kristen gets in um, a conversation with Mitch and she finally tells him about her last relationship and what he did about um, they're having a wedding that, with no groom 
And I thought that was not a big secret. I, I just, Mitch thought it was weird that she had, you know, did all that. And she didn't think so. And she stated it right then and there. And he said he will never treat her the way she was previously treated. I don't know if she, he, she also explained about her buying her own wedding ring. And I, I don't know if she told all that. But um, I don't know why she carried that on her heart. Like that was a big thing to tell somebody else. And why guys would run from it. I just, I don't know. I thought she put way too much into it. Anyway, their futuristic um, party, Mitch wore a wig. And I didn't think he looked half bad in his wig. In fact, after a while, I didn't even notice he had a wig. Um, Mitch, he was going to be a futuristic um, captain of a spaceship. And I guess in his mind, there was going to be a germ problem. And he says he didn't want anyone touching them with their nasty germs. What? <laughs> What, Mitch? Is that coming out of your mouth? <laughs> With your dirty stove and dirty tub. Oh, my goodness. So they had shot glasses, and um, Kristen bought plastic shot glasses. And Mitch had her take them back to get um, these little tin, tin uh, I don't know what they were, tin um, shot glasses. They were reusable, basically. And it cost, I guess... Kristen a lot more uh, than she paid for the plastic ones but they're going to reuse them but he is a stickler about everything when the party started her friend came in Kristen's friend came in with Starbucks a plastic cup and I mean I Mitch didn't uh didn't miss that at all plastic he's like a magnet to plastic um, and what I thought about it, that wasn't the weird part of her buying Starbucks coffee for a friend. But the weird part is you go to a party and you buy Starbucks for one person. I think that's rude. You buy for everybody or you don't buy for nobody. I'm sure somebody, her mother should have taught her that. Anyway. Um, in this party, you know, most parties, everybody talks to their spouses, friends, or family. But Kristen and Mitch's party, they talk to their own friends and family. And she, Kristen's telling everybody about Mitch and how Mitch is about, you know, just so anal about the plastic and she has to adapt to his living the way he wants to live. But her friend said that Mitch needs to adjust to normal life. And he does. We're not all here living in your world, Mitch. You have to compromise. And I hope she makes him do that um, because she'll always just be catering to him. And she even mentioned that she has to walk around. She didn't say eggshells, but she's like walking around uh, tentatively around him. So to make sure she's doing the right thing, which is meaning she's not being herself. And that's going to get old and you're going to build resentment and you're going to lash out and he's not going to know where it came from. And that whole circle. Um, Mitch talked to her friends about Kristen's dog, and he said it was a, a useless creature. How rude is that? What if, you know, people are very serious about their pets. Alexa feels, Alexis feels that she, um, her pet is her son. And what would you, what if, what would she have done if she heard that Mitch said that about her dog? That was terrible. Okay, that's enough about them. Lindy and Miguel. Miguel is really, I think he really is happy with Lindy. From what I've seen in the last couple episodes, he has the video camera uh, filming her while she's cooking in the kitchen. And he's all, that ass though. <laughs> he really, really likes her. Um, he told his friend Steve that Lindy has depth and character and she checks off so many things on his checklist and that she's an oasis in the desert um i thought uh you know he's really come around he says the nicest things to her i know he writes poetry but oasis in the desert i could see that being the title of a poem that he writes about lindy um but then he did joke about 
divorce on D-Day. I don't know. But I really think he does like her. He really is starting to fall for her. It, it just seems like it when he talks to her about his, uh, talks to his friends about Lindy, they can even tell that he's changed. You can tell in his demeanor. Uh, they had their party and it was, con the theme was contestants at, on a game show. They looked like they were on, let's make a deal or something. And Mitch was, I didn't know what he was, but Lindy said he was a pimp. I said, oh, that's what he is. A pimp in the other costume he had. He was a bear. He's like a huggy bear. I mean, Mitch likes to dress up though. He's into that. I think Lindy, she looked like a piece of a piece, a piece of pizza or a slice of pizza, I should say, or something like that on her shirt. She didn't look like she put much effort into it, but whatever. Mm. Lindy talked to Miguel's friends and Lindy's seeing how she finds Miguel so funny and their friends are, his friends were like, we don't find him funny. We're glad you do. Um, Miguel talked to her friends and he says that he and Lindy have deep darkies. And I, for a second, I was like, what? <laughs> but, you know, it means they have, I guess that's their way of deep conversations. Um, they go deep in when they talk to each other. And they seem to be bonding over that. Great. Great. Now, the issue that... Um, that... Um, Min Lindy is having with Miguel is that she wants to be on his health insurance. She doesn't have health insurance. She's a doctor and she doesn't have health insurance, but he won't l put her on the health insurance until she takes his last name, Santiago. And that's very important to him. Um, but it's like he, it's like he's holding that over her head a little bit and she doesn't understand how you want me to take your last name, but you won't care for me um, and put her on the insurance. I'm surprised she doesn't have health insurance on her own. I wonder how many doctors out there don't have health insurance. That's interesting. Um, later, Lindy and Miguel talked about this in bed about her taking his last name and her wanting to be on his health insurance and she says she needs to feel she needs to feel secure he wants to know what he can do to make her feel that way he says or she tells him she needs to be on a joint account with him like a checking account or something they need to have um, plans for living arrangements after the decision day she needs to feel secure before she changes her whole identity because I guess I don't know how that works when you're a doctor and you earn your doctorate under a certain name and then you get married um professionally I guess she could be called her you know her name that she got under her you know when she got her doctorate and just live your personal uh, life using his name I guess you know you have a work relationship and a uh, personal relationship I wonder how that works. In this discussion, um, I don't know if it was the way it was edited, but they're talking calmly, and it seems like all of a sudden Lindy blew up over this, and she's like, "What if I get hit by a car? You don't care about me?" And she just kind of blew up. I was kind of uh, surprised at at Lindy. Um. Well, we'll see. I'm sure he could, it's nothing but nothing for him to put her uh, on his insurance. So I hope that happens. Okay, let's go to Stasha and Nate. Okay, so uh, Derek is Nate's friend and he says that. Um, he was talking to Nate and said he has a hard shell to crack. And Nate disclosed to him that he is going to therapy like Stasha is. So he will be going to. I don't think he has started yet. He wants to discover himself more so his relationship can be better. You know, it's all talk until it's said and done, Nate. I need to see something from you. You do a lot of talking 
I need before I change my mind um, about you you're gonna have to start to produce they had a 70s party which looked fun they were um, it looked like a lot of fun actually uh, Stasha's sister came um, as one of her guests and her, her friend Asia I think is her name but the that's the friend's name now the sister's name I don't know how to pronounce this a S T I Asti maybe Asti I don't know how you pronounce that and so Nate was talking to those two girls and he was talking about how Stasha wants him to di dib, um, dive deep into his emotions and he feels that he's giving a hundred or a hundred and fifty percent when it comes to that but he is also a C student <laughs> <laughs> that was cute, but still, I'm still watching him, and you're not getting the pass until I sh until you produce something to show us that you're a real person and you're in this for real and you're not playing with people. Um, Nate's friend that he has known showed up that he's known for half his life. Um, showed up, which is interesting. I'm glad you have such a long relationship with somebody. Um, that's not even a family member. So he has all the answers. He knows where he really lives. <laughs> um, but not really much happened with those two. So um, that's it for them. So let's talk about Justin and Alexis. Alexis is talking to her si sister Amber and she's informing Amber that about the dog incident where Justin's dog bit her dog and she tells her sister your nephew was attacked meaning her dog Newton she is serious about this being her child um, she said that the dog is going to training for two weeks and if the dog can't act better once it gets back to um, to their home with the other dogs that Justin's best friend will take the dog and she says that, you know, Justin is lovable and sweet, but he's too vague. And that's a con that she has with him. You know, he told all the story about his, you know, the dogs are going to get along or he hopes they get along, but never informed her that he's gotten into uh, situations with other dogs previously. And I think this is going to be an issue because... One thing what's wrong with Alexis is that she doesn't, she has fear of commitment and that's in, she has this as an internal uh, conflict with her and she's not going to be able to trust somebody who doesn't tell her a whole truth. She's not going to want to commit and give of herself to this person, but she still likes Justin. Um, she still finds herself buying stuff for him. Um, he still she says her sister asked her do you love him and she says she does love him but she's not in love with him the thing is she talked all that talk about what's hard about marriage what's hard about marriage and you're not even two weeks into it and you see what's hard about marriage now mm. now one thing I do agree with um, Alexis is Justin didn't tell her um, that since the her dog is his dog's been away and he's kind of been taking care of the dog we're not really I guess when he's home uh, the dog was sick he, and the dog was throwing up and not eating for a couple of days and she, he didn't tell Alexis and that is information it, that you should have told her she should know that her dog was sick he thought he was handling it and that was no big deal that he was dealing with it and again, you shouldn't be doing things like that, Justin. I agree with Alexis. You're wrong for that. You are wrong for not telling her about her pet being sick. Um, they have a, they're doing a party. Their party is 90s theme. And they buy candy. They go out to this candy store and they're getting all kinds, I guess, 90s candy. And at the candy store, they get into another little tiff at the store. And... Um, Justin is arguing with her about she walks away when they're talking and 
that is true. She does. And he's being too vague on the details, on the necessary details that she needs to be told. He doesn't want to, she, you know, he's trying to keep things all pretty and uh, nothing wrong here. When something is wrong and when you don't tell it, you make it even worse. Uh, when they were at the candy store, she was very, um, Justin says she likes drama. And she, maybe she does. Um, she thinks that he's unable to communicate. She gets in a, a little huff about it and she wants to get away from him. She asks to be unmiked. And I, in a way, I agree with her in this instance. You need to do better, Justin, because the things you're just being, you know, you're acting like a child. I understand you're acting like a child. You don't want her to be mad. You want everything to be a okay. You don't want no one to be mad at you. You don't want no one to leave you. Um, but you're going to have to be a little bit more adult in your relationship. When they had their party, they had everybody come over. It was really weird. It's, I think Alexis she just seems like everyone needs to feel the way she feels. She was greeting people at the door. And, well, mainly it was it was Justin's friends that she was greeting. And she was cordial. I don't think she was necessarily festive, if that's not your style. She just seemed a little too dry for, uh, with them. And I, that's just because she's not feeling herself because of the way Justin has made her feel. I just noticed that. And they were all in a group together and she started to um, talk about the situation before she got an okay from Justin in the group. So she did apologize to him right then and there, but she opened up about their conflict. Um, and Justin, you know, I don't know how he felt about it. He seemed okay. Uh, he continued with uh, the conversation uh, on his point. That she's being, that she is, um, he, that he's, that be, he's being drilled with too many questions, mu multiple questions at once. And I think this was after the party and she totally disagreed that that was even happening. Um, she spoke to his friends, Whitney and Amari, that, uh, he's being deceptive and, you know, she's just, she can't commit. She it's frustrating her. She's, it's making her mad. Um, that, I'm sorry. She told Amari or Whitney that she loved and wasn't her sister. She told Whitney and when, when she asked, uh, Alexis, do you love Justin? She said, yes. Um, her heart is in the relationship and she's just, I guess, doesn't want to get her heart hurt. And Justin at the time spoke with Emma and Will. And it just didn't seem like, it didn't feel like a party. The mood wasn't party-like. It was more <laughs> intervention type of feel than a party type of feel. Um, but Alexa and her mood, I don't know. I understand. I'm just not... I agree with her. I do agree with her. I just think she can work on herself a little bit more. Um, she has a right to be upset. I just think that she um, shouldn't have her mood all over her face if she's throwing a party. Uh, they had the girls get together and the guys get together. And Alexis tells the girls that Justin likes talking to her while he's on the toilet. And Sasha's like, on the toilet? Yeah, that's... First of all, it's way too soon, if ever, that's going to be okay. Um, but Justin, you know, they always said they were walking around naked at the honeymoon right away. They were feeling real comfortable. I think there's some things that you should just ease into. Uh, Kristen shared that there's a 100% improvement on her relationship with Mitch. He's on her all the time. Uh, they've consummated their marriage over and over again. Stasha was hearing what Alexis had to say about Justin being too vague, not giving all the details about everything um, to her. She had Justin's side. She's like, she felt that Justin can't think of everything to tell her right away. It's a, been a short amount of time and things might lapse, but I don't think she knows the whole story because if the dog is sick and things like that, those are things that uh, she should be told and uh, right away, same day. In fact, he should send her a text uh, and tell her right away that the dog is throwing up 
or when she comes home, the dog didn't eat today. She shouldn't be held in the dark about certain things. Um, Lindy shared that with the girls that the insurance issue and taking the last name of um, of Miguel, Kristen is team Miguel on this, that um, she should be taking her la his last name if he wants to be on the insurance. And Stasha is team Lindy on this, that Lindy needs to feel more secure before she gives up her identity and takes on another man's name. Mm. Now, Alexis, once again, is inappropriate, and I don't agree with her here. We're back to where how I felt about her originally. Alexa tells the girls that, you know, they haven't consummated the ma marriage, but Justin had a wet dream. She is just telling too much business. I just, everything that is personal is, she's just telling too much business. Over on the guy side, um, Mitch, everyone thinks that Mitch looks very happy. His mood has changed. He's referring to Kristen as Chris, um, though her dog is a monkey wrench to him. <laughs> He's not feeling that dog at all. Uh, ben is not feeling mortgage, uh, Morgan's cat. It hisses at him and he feels that the cat is evil. Um, Justin told the group that they have not consummated their marriage. And Mitch says, when you do, it will be like a supernova event. <laughs> For, for Justin, it will. I don't think that will be the case for Alexis. Nate says he hasn't uh, consummated his marriage yet, but he's had dessert. Well, his dessert was, I don't know, I think that was Stasha's dessert. It sounds like he satisfied her without um, sexual intercourse. Um, well, good for Stasha. At least she's getting something out of the deal. Um now, everyone advised, or well, I think it was maybe, well, some of the guys advised Ben um, to be more affectionate with Morgan. You know, they're still at this brick wall that he's at, and he wants to be affectionate. So the guys tell him, be more affectionate. Just do it. If you feel like being that way, be that way. Um, so I hope that kind of turns around for Ben's sake. After that was all over, uh, Lindy and Miguel talked again, and... Lindy will be put on uh, Miguel's insurance after all. I don't think that was, I, I think he would have done it without having her change her name. But I'm glad to see that he is going to put her on his insurance. He, Miguel likes her. He likes the idea of being married to her. And, you know, he's going to add her on his insurance. So that was sweet. I thought it, it had a sweet ending to it. Um... Alexis and uh, Justin need to um, resolve their issues and get back on the same track, as well as Ben and Mindy. Um, but everybody else seems like they're coasting or doing well. So that's it for now. Thank you for staying to the end. Please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And I thank you in advance. And please check out my channel to view my other videos, travel videos, and other TV and movie reviews. That's it for now. I gotta go because I got living to do. Bye.